Why hello WCA, Mike Amore. Welcome to the week two update. This video, uh, like last week, is going to show positions from your own games. And I, I'm going to ask you to stop the video occasionally just to take a look at the position I leave you with and really try to understand the concept that we're, we're getting across in these videos, okay? So we're going to start here uh, it, with this first position. This is um, John playing Mari from... Um, I believe the two o'clock class on Sunday. John has the white pieces, Mari has black. In this position, John played a move that kind of made me wonder. He played knight to g5, and I think I understood why he was playing it. I, I, you guys can see that the knight is attacking the pawn on f7, correct? But he is breaking one of the rules that we talk about, which is during the opening phase of the game or early middle game, Please be careful moving the same minor piece twice. Now here, John has almost completed his development. Let's put his knight back. If he castles, brings his bishop out, he's very close to completing development, correct? But after knight g5, he keeps his king in the middle, moves the knight, and you'll also notice that it gives up control of the d4 square. So if anything happens where this knight can penetrate on d4, this knight is not going to be able to take that piece off the board. Okay, so here, I, I believe in the game, Mari actually played the move uh, knight to g4, which is kind of cool. She has a definite, definite attacking idea. She's attacking the f-pawn. So is John. You see the knight here is attacking the f-pawn, but the problem for John is this f-pawn is defended by the rook. And here, white is not defending that pawn. So if, for example, you try to chase the knight away, you're in big trouble. Um, taking the pawn with, with the knight looks good, but taking with the bishop is even stronger. Check. How does the king get out of check? Uh, not so easy in this position. Um, you have to be really, really careful. Uh, if you come to the e2 square, you're going to get checked by the knight. You see what I was talking about? You're just letting black into all these pieces. And then I don't know, pause your video. What would you play if you were black? Oh my goodness, how do I do that? Isn't it, isn't it amazing how fast I can turn these boards around? What's black's best move in this position? Checkmate. Look at the black pieces just swarming all over these holes that white has in their position. Let us go back. After knight g5, now you're looking at it from Mari's perspective. In this position, her move was very good. She, she could have played this move, and John maybe could castle here or do something to protect this square. Uh, I was also looking at, for Mari, the idea of instead of moving her knight to g4, how about introducing a new piece, putting the bishop there, attacking the queen? Because a very common response would be the move pawn f3, chasing the uh, the bishop away. So let's say the bishop drops back to d7. If you're not careful here with, with the uh, white pieces and you just play a typical move like bishop to d2, what happens if I kick your knight out? You know, I'll, I'll play black so I can feel like uh, I'm the one winning this game. What does white do here? The same idea of taking on f7 the way Mari took up here on F2, on F2 doesn't work the same because the rook will take. And then if you swap the rook for the bishop, you're going to have this position. And a lot of WCA students already understand this. So we have two kind of principles or ideas we can put in the blog. One, be very careful moving the same piece twice. Number two, trading a rook for two minor pieces. Okay? Maybe we can add a third from this position. Let's go back to when black attacks this knight. If you don't take on f7, the only safe square for this knight would be to go back here on h3, and now you have to be very, very careful. Because now I can take your knight, and assuming you take back not to go down a piece, do you see this diagonal here? and the fact that the king is in the middle, when you have that many weak squares, move like uh, knight g4 are possible. Look at that. How crazy is that move? Let's go back. Like, are you crazy? You're just giving that knight away? I am. 
And I'm not giving it away on, on E4 because then maybe this knight can take. And if this knight is here, then you can see it protecting these two dark squares. Very important that this knight can do that. But if I throw this move at you, you know, now I'm threatening maybe to come in and, and try to checkmate you. Uh, you have a problem. You cannot take that knight. Let's say you take with the H pawn. Made in two. You guys see it? Stop the video. Luca, leave your sister alone. Kids have been asking me, why am I constantly picking on Luca? Well, poor kid, he has no choice. Made in two. Stop the video. Okay, wow, every single one of you got it. Amazing. Queen h4 check. The king has two legal moves, doesn't matter which. Game is finished, it, I tell you. Very good. Let us go back. So h6, the knight retreats. We take it, take it. Knight g4, giving the knight away. What if white sees the idea and protects this square with a move like rook f1 guess what still have problems check how do you get out of check you can block with the rook i'll just take it if you move the king mate in one stop the video wow everybody except one person got the mate in one i will not say who that is game is finished look at that okay anybody wonder why i say finished and not finished couple of you know. All right, that was position number one. Okay, position number two. Um, we have Danny playing the black pieces. We have a couple of Dannys. So I think this may have been Danny B. Um, black to play. Black in this position decided to defend this pawn here on e5 with the move bishop to d6. And I'm going to flip the board again. Amazing. Do you guys see the fact that this bishop here, and let me highlight it, and the knight, do you see how they're separated by one square? So this could be another concept I can put in the blog. Be very careful when there are two pieces on the board separated by one square. Look out for pawn forks. That's right. Pawn forks are terrible in these positions. Um, what if you just take the pawn? Big problem. Bishop takes. I think this may have been Hannah playing the white pieces. Um, pretty sure it was or Leia. It was definitely one of, uh, of the sisters. In this position, black is completely lost because once uh, Danny takes back, first you trade the queens. You get the king in the middle of the board, and then you pick up an extra bishop. So that was um, that got him in a little trouble. But, you know, you're not here to win every game. You're here to learn. So learn from this mistake. Let's go back to the position. Look at the move bishop to d6. Look at the highlights. Two pieces separated by one square. What do you look out for? You look out for Luca. He doesn't pull your hair. And what's the second thing? Pawn forks. Pawn takes. Bishop takes. Trade big mama. Game is over. Black is in big, big trouble. Okay, let's go to number three. Okay, number three, I believe we have Aris playing the black pieces. And there was a really cool try here. Um, in this position, black is going to try to take advantage of this battery here. You see how the queen and bishop are lining up together against this bishop here on h4? So if this knight were not there, then you would have a two-on-one. You have the queen and bishop attacking the bishop here. If you take it, the knight takes, the queen takes, you win something. So what he tried to do was play knight takes pawn, and his opponent, I forgot who it was, I could look it up for you, um, missed an in-between move. So what, should, what could you do here? Um, in the game, they took with the pawn and allowed bishop takes. You see, pawn takes, and then black ends up being uh, up a pawn here. But after knight takes e4, uh, what if you threw the in-between move in and just grabbed that 
uh, bishop up there. Now the queen is being attacked. Uh, you can try taking this here. Uh, really cool. Actually, I think this was a uh, new student, Daniel, playing black. And this turned out to be a really, really interesting position because of these in-between moves. But I think black is going to get into a little bit of trouble here because, you know, if I take the queen, you're going to have to take mine. And then if I grab a pawn to escape, you can grab a pawn to escape. Uh, but do the math here. I think, uh, you know, you can pause the video and see how this turned out for, uh, for black trying that trick. Okay? All right. Yeah, I hope you can see that this knight here is going to have a hard time getting out. Um, th there's all sorts of ways to, to play from this position, but I think white is going to end up the better of this. But a really nice try anyway. Okay, let's take a look at the fourth position. Okay, here's a pretty simple uh, concept. Um, in this position, black had just played bishop to g4, pinning the knight to the queen. And you need to be worried about this pin, especially when this knight here that I'm toggling can can jump into this square. Um, whoops, didn't want to do that. Sorry. But you see the knight is pinned to the king. If the knight is pinned, it's very hard for black to put more pressure on this knight. And as long as they can't put more pressure on the knight, if you do something like attack the bishop and they decide to take then you can comfortably take back with your queen, not worrying about losing a tempo getting hit with this knight. After all, it's pinned. If, if black tries to chase your bishop away, then you have the option of removing the knight. Um, you're doubling the black pawns. I mean, look, black has a bunch of pawns in the center. Uh, it doesn't mean, you know, they're winning or losing, but they do have these double pawns, and this, and this pawn here on a6 could become weak in the end game. I think maybe white gets a little something from this trade, but what happened in the game in class, I'll take you back to the original pin, is that white really worried about that pin and got the queen out of the way. And you have to be very careful about doing that um, because white is going to have that knight taken. And again, you'll have doubled pawns here, but there is a difference. These pawns are in front of your king. So, you know, I don't think it was necessary for white to have to deal with that structural problem. So again, what's the thing to remember here? If you're pinned, make sure your opponent can't put more pressure on that piece. In this position, they can't. So what can you do? You can try to get the bishop out of the way to move, to trade off, but you definitely don't have to allow them to break your pawns. Okay? All right. Okay, let's do one more. This was uh, Sophie with white and Navaneeth with black. Um, so these two players have been hitting the tournament circuit fairly regularly they're playing a lot i can i can't believe i said regularly fairly well that's a word i cannot pronounce particularly that's another one familiarity oh my goodness i just can't say these words but i got regularly out of my mouth isn't that wonderful okay we are looking at sophie and Navaneeth. sophie found a pretty nice pin here with white can you find it the move is bishop to a4. And here there is a lot of pressure on this diagonal and you'll see that Sophie is attacking this knight twice. What to do? Well, he played bishop takes e5, attack, uh, I mean getting rid of the knight and that seemed like a reasonable move. And then here Sophie probably should have taken with the pawn because when you take with the pawn, you give this knight on f6 a problem. Keep in mind that this bishop is still pinning the knight. And we'll get back to this in a second. What Sophie did instead is she played an in-between move, if the notation was correct. So in this position, she decided to take the knight, allowing the queen to take back, and then uh, traded here. So the pieces are coming off the board. She still got a reasonable position out of this, um, but you know, if you if you go back to that middle position that I showed you, the second that uh, that pin is on the board and they decide to take your bishop off, so here's the pin again. You guys see it, right? There and here. As soon as they take that off, if you take with the pawn, 
The problem is the knight needs to go somewhere. It cannot go to d7. Because if it goes to d7, it will be blocking the queen's protection. You guys see that? Y your bishop will just take this knight for free. and That's not going to be good. So a logical move might be to jump to g4 to put some pressure on this pawn. But here there's a very, very sneaky plan for white. Remember the theme from last game, putting pressure on the pin piece? Stop the video and see if you can find a way for white to pressure this piece. Very good. Everybody got it. Knight to b3. The problem here for black, it's almost impossible. I mean, how do you stop knight to d4? You can try to win a pawn here, uh, but you better not take this pawn. Because if the bishop takes back, remember, you cannot move the knight on c6. You'll lose your queen. If you move the queen anywhere, uh, the bishop will take for free or you have to deal with knight to d4. So I think in this position, uh, white would be uh, winning. I think something like this actually happened in the game, uh, but in a different kind of slightly different order. OK, all right, that's it. I'm glad you, you saw the video. Take a look at the blog, some of the words that I used and solve puzzles every second of the day. I mean, I'd even recommend don't even do your schoolwork anymore. Just solve chess puzzles. I'm just kidding. Sort of. All right. See you later.